Hi guys, so welcome back. I hope you all had an amazing week. For those of you tuning in for the first time, welcome. I am Wizards Creates and my channel is 100% dedicated to everything Harry Potter and DIY. If you haven't already, please remember to like and subscribe as well as follow me on Instagram. So yeah, guys, today I am really excited about this video. I have been planning this for a really long time or I've wanted to do this for a really long time. So yeah, we are gonna do... I am sorry, I'm going to pronounce this incorrectly, I know. Uh, so please, please, please don't be harsh. Um, yeah, so I want to make the Mimbulus Mimbletonia. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to make this one from Super Sculpey. Um, unfortunately, th this is the firm one. You get different hardness um, Sculpey. Um, but in South Africa, you don't really get this very often and um, so yeah in a perfect world i wouldn't have wanted to use the firm one i wouldn't would have wanted to use the middle one um but yeah if you can only get the firm one that's why i bought the clay softener so you just add a tiny bit of this and it makes your clay soft again then i just have like a utility knife um i have a couple of um clay tools that i'm gonna use um and then foil Guys, foil is your friend, especially making stuff like this. Um, you don't want the whole thing to be clay. You can if you want to, um, but yeah, you don't really want that because polymer clay is expensive um, and it's a waste, basically. Um, and I really don't like wastage. So for the inner, you're gonna make a little inner mold or an inner sculpture of foil, um, which you can then cover with your um, polymer clay. So working with the clay is really easy. You just need a tiny bit of elbow grease. So cut off a nice enough chunk that you can do more than one thing with, but not too big. I mean, I can't work this whole block at once. Um, so yeah, cut off a nice enough piece that you can actually do a couple of stuff with and then you start working it. So the more you work the clay, the softer it gets and the more pliable it gets. If you feel that the clay is not working that well, then you can add a tiny bit of thinner, but don't add too much because it's gonna, it's gonna be a mess. Rather work it until it is the right consistency and that you can actually work with it. So I am pretty happy with this inner. Um, like you can see, if I put it in the pot plant, it more or less has the shape that it should in the end. Um, yeah, don't don't make this too thick. Rather make it a bit thinner because remember you have to still put clay over this. Um, so you don't want it to be too thick, and then it doesn't fit into your pot. Um, so yeah, I am really happy with this one. Then to work with the polymer clay, I am going to do it on a piece of extra glass that I have. Um, yeah, I've just found that working on glass just makes cleaning up afterwards a lot easier. And also the, the polymer clay doesn't stick to glass as much as it would any other surface. Um, so yeah, I just find that it's a bit easier for me. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to go on and start with this plant. I'm going to put it on a time lapse again. And like I said, guys, you can do this any way that you want. Um, you don't have to do it the same way. You can follow your own mind um, and make it your own. Okay, guys, so I just wanted to show you this part. So if you see, that is the texture of the clay. Um, and the foil. Um, and I really love this texture because it does look lumpy and bumpy. Um, this is how thick I made the clay. So it's really, really thin. I didn't want to make it too thick um, because yeah, you're not going to see the majority of this because it's going to have bigger lumps and bumps on it. To join these together, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut the top part off where it overlaps. So I can cut it off there. 
So you'll see that's where it overlaps. So I just overlap it a bit more and then you start And you'll see as you smooth it out, the lines will, will go away. Obviously don't do it too hard like there. I pressed too hard and now the foil is showing. So don't press too hard, especially with a thinner clay like this. Um, but yeah, you can just spread it around and it's, it's really easy. And again, just take your time guys. Um, with all of this DIY and stuff like that, you just have to take your time. Um, and like there you can see there's nail impressions so to get those away you can also just gently rub with your finger so you guys can see it's fairly easy to to work with this clay um, this this is a nice consistency at the moment so it's very very easy to join everything together whereas when it's hard it really it doesn't really work that well so you'll see there i made the clay a bit too thin so all you can do with that is you can just cut a piece off layer it on, on top and just do the same thing that's why I say, guys, this polymer clay is so, so easy to work with. Um, and you can basically do anything, anything you want. And there you have it. It's almost gone. So I'm going to carry on. I'm going to close the top and the bottom and make sure that no other pieces of foil are sticking out like there. Um, and then we can go on and do the baubles. Um, so for that... All I'm going to do is I'm going to roll different shapes and sizes of balls. So let's do this one, for example. I'm going to do that one. It's just a rough one. Um, and then I'm just going to stick it on top. And you can just press it down slightly. You can still shape it if you want to. If you want it to be a bit more round, you can flatten it down if you want it to be like that part those are flattened and then you can keep it like this if you want to but after baking this chances of this popping off is fairly high especially when it comes to bigger items like this and if you look at that part that the majority of balls that are linked um, are so much more and the weight is more so you don't want yeah you don't want it pop popping off and um, you don't want that i'm going to use this tool so this has a ball point on that, that, that side and then it's got silicone tip on this side. Uh, so this is similar to what they use in nail art. Um, these are actually nail art <laughs> uh, tools, um, but they work perfect for clay. So all I'm going to do is add the join part. I'm just going to roll the top part over the bottom part. And I'm going to do exactly what I just did by um, hiding the foil. And you carry on. I'm not going to do the whole one around uh, for you guys. Now I'm going to do it with each one. But just to show you guys what it looks like in the end. And yeah, this part, it's going to take some time. Um, and yeah, take your time with it because you don't want to rush it. You don't want it to look bad in the end. I also apologize, guys, if I go off camera. Um, I am so, so sorry. But yeah, when I get into the groove, I forget about the camera completely. Um, and then getting the thing right is more important. <laughs> um, so yeah, that is basically what it looks like, if you can see in there. So the two parts are joined unlike there. Um, so yeah, that is what you want, obviously a bit smoother, a bit better. Um, but yeah, that is generally what you're gonna do with each and every bauble.
guys, so I have done the one half of a plant um, and I've decided that I'm going to bake it more than once. Um, so I'm going to complete this side, bake it and then do the other side and then bake it again. Um, because yeah, it is getting a bit tricky, um, especially when working around um, I kind of might make marks everywhere um, and I don't want that. So I'm going to bake it this way around and then I'm going to turn it around, do this side and then bake that as well. Um, so for this clay, I'm going to bake or the package says you have to bake it for um, 15 minutes on 130 degrees Celsius. Um, so I'm going to take the temperature down a bit. I'm going to make it 110 um, for about... 15 to 20 minutes. I'll see how it goes. Uh, but the reason why I do that is because I'm going to bake it more than once. I don't want to over bake it. Um, and yeah, the chances of over baking it when you bake it on 130, um, especially if you do it multiple times, then yeah, that is, you just increase the chances of that. So you don't want that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to bake it at 110. Uh, for 15 to 20 minutes and then do the other side. So before I can do that, I have to add, oh, sorry, I have to add these little fires that are on the plant. Uh, so to do that, it's very, very easy. So to do that, I'm just gonna take a tiny bit and I am going to roll it. Just so that it's more or less the same width all the way. And thinner. So what I can do now is I'm just going to cut about that length. Obviously all these are going to be different. Then I'm going to roll a ball. And then all I do is I'm going to do it with a bigger piece so that you can see it. So I roll a ball around one. So that's my ball. Obviously it's gonna be a lot uh, smaller. And then all I do is on one side, you kind of do that. And you'll see you get a little spire. So obviously I'm gonna do this on a very small scale for the plant, uh, but I'm going to make a bunch of these. So if we take this one, I'm going to do that. So there you have it. So this is a bit labor intensive, but if you see it there, that's what it looks like. Um, and then to add it, let's say I'm going to add it on that one. Uh, so I have a ball there. So I just make a little ball on this. And then I can put the spire in there. And yeah, again, just neat it up a tiny bit. You don't have to do it too much with the spires. But just make sure that it is stuck to the actual piece and um, so yeah i'm gonna do that and then we can bake it okay guys so i have now put all the thorns on the side um it took forever um i thought it was gonna be a lot quicker but no uh, so yeah the thorns take a really long time uh, so I'm going to bake it now, but before I bake it, I'm just going to double check that all the thorns are um, as I want them to be. Because remember, after the step, you can't change anything on this. Um, so, for example, on this side as well, you have to kind of clean everything up and make sure that everything is right. Um, because, yeah, after this, it is going to be kind of set in stone. Um, so, yeah, and then we can add on to that. Okay, guys, so this one just came out of the oven um, and everything is looking great. So I gave it about 10 minutes just to cool down properly. Um, but, yeah, it's fully cured um, and it's looking really, really good. 
And so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to continue exactly with what I've been doing the whole time. Um, I'm going to continue around and do the other side um, and then I'm going to bake it again. So yeah. Okay guys, so we are now completely finished with the sky and now we can go on to the fun part of painting it. Um, so yeah, after taking it out of the oven, a couple of these thorns did break off. Um, I think it's because the joints weren't properly done. Um, so yeah, I just redid some of the thorns, rebaked it and yeah, it is the way that I want it now. And I also added this little piece at the bottom. So the reason why I added this, when I put it in the pot, that it has something to secure to, and it's not just a flat piece and then it's top heavy. Um, so that's why I added that little piece. And um, so I'm gonna start off with black. Um, in my personal opinion, when painting something completely, um, always cover it with black first. Um, and then you can start adding color. The reason why I do that is because it's easier than that the shading is, the shading looks better. Um, so for example, if you paint the whole thing black, um, when adding the green on top, like small spaces like that will stay kind of black or dark. Um, so then you actually do your shading from dark to light. Um, so when painting, you always start with the darkest first and then you add the lighter ones on top. Um, so that's how I'm going to do that. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to see how it goes. I don't have a set way of painting. I am not a professional painter. Um, so I just start with the black and then I'm going to add green, maybe mix a couple of maybe the green and the yellow just to get a bit of differentiation because you don't want the whole thing just to be plain green um, and then i have a couple of brushes different size brushes and i also have a little sponge um so i think for like shading on on the baubles i think i might use this um so yeah like i said i am not a professional painter <laughs> um i just basically see how it goes and then i add and take away um as i want to um, so yeah, that is that. Okay guys, I'm just going to stop the video here. Um, I just want to show you something. Uh, so the sponge is working out a lot better than I actually <laughs> actually thought it was. So that was the black and the green. That's how that looked. Um, and this is the lighter green on top uh, just with by using the sponge. And yeah, it's working a lot better than I actually anticipated it to. So I'm just going to show you uh, what I do. Okay, so I'm going to do it on the other side. Um, so all I do is I just put a little bit of the green on there and you kind of just pat it. Um, and then you'll see it makes like a really awesome texture on there, um, which I actually love um, because if you look at the brush strokes, it does make I did this very quickly because it's I knew I was going to do a lighter color over it. Uh, but the brush strokes do make strokes, whereas this really blends everything in. And it's just it just looks absolutely, absolutely cool. Um, and what I like is like there, if you can see there, um, there's a bit of black and a bit of white. So sometimes the sponge actually touches that part. 
um let's get a bit of white too so it looks like that on the sponge and then when you go on it does that but as soon as you start blending it it does give it a bit more definition so it's not just one plain color and i absolutely love how this is actually turning out um, it does give it a really cool, cool texture. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to carry on like that. I mean, if you look at the difference, it's a massive difference, actually. Um, so I'm just going to carry on. I just wanted to show you guys um, so that when you guys do any painting, um, and then perhaps you can use the same technique. guys I am now finished with the painting um, and now I'm going to do these little white dots so I'm not going to do them on all of them I'm just going to do them on a couple um, so all I'm going to do is I I have a little bit of white here and still some of the red so I'm going to take a tiny bit of the red and just work it into the white so that it's not too white because we don't want it to be like super, super, super white. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to do it like that. So I'm not going to do all of them, just a couple. Um, and basically you just put a tiny bit of white on the end. Um, so I'm going to do that all around. guys so the next part is we are going to do this little pot so my pot is already terracotta so i don't have to paint that so if you bought a plastic one uh, then you just obviously have to paint it terracotta and then i made these lines i made a brown type paint um almost similar to the terracotta but just a slight difference and then a green um and yeah so i'm going to do that now and then we can put the pot or the plant in the pot. Next, I am just going to cut the polystyrene to fit inside um, the, the pot. Uh, so I've made two little circles. One, I've taken the one from uh, the bottom and one from the top. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to paste them together and then cut them so that they taper to the bottom. The next part, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put grass on top of there because if you see when I push this one in, you do see the side and I don't want that. Um, so all I'm going to do is because this is white, covering this with grass is going to be very difficult uh, without the white showing. Um, so I'm just going to paint it brown and a bit of green um, over top so that it's going to be covered, but just so that the white doesn't show and um, so that there's either brown or green on the um, polystyrene. Okay guys, so I'm pretty happy with the brown. 
Um, I'm not too concerned about the parts where it goes in there because the grass is actually going to go in there. Um, so I'm not too stressed out about that. Um, so yeah, this is basically craft grass that you can buy from a hobby shop. Um, we got this in a RoboTime um, kit. It's like one of those DIY kits. They're really awesome. Um, we got this in there. Um, but you should be able to find this at any craft store. And then we also had this, um, which is also part of that kit. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to put a little bit of glue at a time and we're going to take my time. A um, little bit at a time and then just um, pour this on top. Um, and then it should stick onto there. And I'm going to add maybe a couple of extra um, twigs in there. I'm not too sure. I'm going to see how it goes. Um, and then when I'm finished with that, I'm going to put some hot glue on this end and then stick it in the pot. Um, and then we're done. Okay, guys, so this is how this little plant came out. I'm absolutely really, really happy with how it came out. Um, it came out better than I expected it. Um, it can still improve a lot. Um, like I said, I am not really good at painting um, yet, but I have to still practice. So it can be better, but I am really happy with how this came out. Um, so yeah, if we look at the pot, that's what the pot looks like. Um, and then we've got the grass on there. I think it just, the grass just adds a tiny bit of magic, I think, to it. And it just, it doesn't stop in the pot um, because I, did, I didn't want to do that. Um, so yeah, I am really, really happy with the grass. And then if we look at the plant overall, I like what the sponge did, um, like you can see uh, there. It does give it a really cool texture. Um, and then you've got the little thorns and the white parts. I did add a lot more white than I expected it to, um, but yeah. Then like I mentioned, I want to make a, a herbology display. And I think the size of this plant is perfect together with the Funko Pops. Um, it's not too big, but it's not too small. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with the size and they, they do look really cute together. Um, so yeah, I'm eventually going to do uh, one of these mandrakes as well. Um, but yeah, for now, it's just going to be this one. Um, so yeah. So guys, uh, thanks again for watching. I really do appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoy this video. And then uh, next week's video is going to be a video about Christmas decorations. So please tune in and there's also going to be a free download. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys have an awesome week and I'll see you again next week.